There are billions of women passing through similar experiences all around the world, and for whatever reason, we often feel like we're alone. It's time to make a point of discussing these topics from a range of viewpoints. These conversations surpass age, race, location. They are relevant to women everywhere. Welcome to the She Word. Conversations that women rarely have, but really should. What if you could start your journey over? Start here and start again there. That's how life works, in a circular way. We understand the importance of circles, and that's why you are at the heart of ours. Find your way to wellness with Browns. Yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> Welcome to the She Word conversations that women rarely have but really should. In this show, we're looking at a topic that affects almost every single woman in one way or another. Today, we're talking about body modification. And before you sort of think to yourself, that doesn't apply to me, we're looking at every kind of body modification because body modification can include piercings, a tattoo, uh, getting your hair dyed, getting your nails done. This is all body modification. But in 2023, the opportunity to modify our bodies is much, much more extensive. Botox, fillers, cosmetic and plastic surgeries is commonplace. So today we're going to have this great conversation, but we're going to be looking at it from very different viewpoints. And joining me first up is Ter Teresa Anna, of whom I am a big girl fan. <laughs> I'm so glad <laughs> Thank you very much. that I got to have you here on this show because your story is phenomenal. And your story is about gastric surgery that we're going to talk about a little bit later, which is kind of on the higher spectrum of body modification. But obviously it's worked. So we'll be talking about that. But also, Sue Caruana, I'm just going to say now, Sue, I've got my eye on you. Because you're a bit of a, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the older I get, the naughtier I become. Oh, Lord. <laughs> but you started life as a nurse. <laughs> And has took a completely different path by getting into the beauty industry. Mm. You've been trained by the best in the world. And you now run, of course, your own salon, which we're all very familiar with. And you personally specialize in semi-permanent beauty treatments. Yes. Brilliant. Semi-permanent makeup. Excellent. We're coming to that in a minute as well. But we're also joined by <laughs> Nikki Mikhailov Stafrach, who is a family medicine specialist then who went into specializing into aesthetic medicine. And I want to find out all about that and exactly what that is in a few minutes. <laughs> but I, I know you and your partner very, very well personally. So I want, just before we go into this topic, I want to, to just give you the opportunity to give a bit more of an explanation of who you are and what your story is without going to into it in too much detail because we're coming to that in a minute. But just a little bit, Therese, a bit more of an introduction from you. So I'm Teresa, I'm, I'm 39 years old, and six months ago I decided to, de to do the gastric bypass. <clears throat> um, I always was over overweight and I tried all the diets and all the nutritionists in Malta and all everything and I decided I give up and I wanted to change my life and I did it. <laughs> you most certainly did. And there's a much bigger story and, of course, a huge following behind your story. And we'll come to that in just a minute. Sue, you, it's just sitting next to you is making me nervous. <laughs> because I don't know what to expect. But a little bit more of your story, please. Well, I started off um, as, a, as a nurse, but um, uh, specialising in children, babies. So, uh, and Skabu and, and that. So, that was my original um the start of but uh then i started uh, in management of nightclubs and and um and uh, <laughs> nightclubs and um ah yes that sort of life and then um, um i went into doing my own nails because i always loved to have my nails done started as a nail technician from that it grew then into you know, having a salon and whatever. And so now I've ended up doing um, semi-permanent make because I, I just, I, I love tattoos and yeah. And I suppose body modification, I think most of my body has been modified. So yeah, it's been a, it's been a, 
I'm a big fan. <laughs> that is just a whole show right there. There's the Sue Caruana <laughs> show as well. Um, Nikki, just a bit more of an introduction to you. So um, I'm 44 years old. I graduated as a doctor about 21 years ago now. Um, I'm a mother of three. And I, yes, right. So as you said, I was, um, my special, speciality was family medicine, but um, spent some time living in Abu Dhabi with my husband and decided to start off aesthetics and did some gradu- um, degrees over there and then moved back to Malta and continued with the family because growing. And then I started working in a center doing aesthetics and then Sue and I passed, passed crossed. And now I also work she in the same salon. She started picking me. And exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's incredible is that we've, we've been five minutes into the show and I feel like each one of you warrants your own show. <laughs> I mean, you all have these incredible stories, but we're going to bring them all together. First of all, I'm going to say cheers. Thank you so much. Cheers. This is coming. really nice wine, huh? Do you like it? <laughs> it is. It's really good. There you cheers, go. Cheers, cheers. 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 Well, I, I'm looking forward to passing you the bottle in a few minutes and we'll it's carry nice. on with that. Let's start off with some statistics. And first of all, I'm going to start with Botox, because Botox is undoubtedly the number one non-evasive procedure in 2022. Over 7.4 million people in the US alone are receiving Botox treatments. Globally, the Botox market is worth about $4.4 billion. Moving on to plastic surgery, globally the average plastic surgeon performed 320 surgical procedures in 2021, compared with 220 procedures in 2020. That's a massive rise. And in 2023, the most popular surgeries are, in order, liposuction, breast augmentation, abdominoplasticity, tummy tuck, mm-hmm. uh, a mass. Dopexy, which is a what's that? Breast lift. Lift. Okay, okay. You're the expert. I'm going to be uh. asking you about this. And then coming on to gastric surgery, because uh, we're covering across the whole world here. So in Sweden, gastric bypass procedure is the absolute leader of how do you say this? Bariatric. Bariatric. Yes, bariatric. Yes. Bariatric. 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 I'm learning yeah. these new things. It's fantastic. And uh, it accounts for 97% of all bariatric surgeries performed in the country. Gastric bypass is also very popular in Spain, where it accounts for three quarters of the same surgeries. And the figures are quite similar in the UK and the US, where gastric bypass accounts for 58 and 56, respectively. So we're talking about procedures that are permanent or semi-permanent mm-hmm. that are modifying a body to do, perform or look in a different way and they are on the rise. So I want to start off by asking from your perspective, from each of your perspectives, what happened? Why? Why is this suddenly so popular? Why are we seeing this now in 2020, 21, 22? We're seeing this sudden rise. So I don't know who wants to jump in, but but obviously... There's a range between getting your eyelashes done to getting yeah. gastric <clears throat> surgery, but they are all body modification and it's all reflecting this sort of, I, I personally, I'm kind of like, we you know, we're going through that kind of insta to reality thing. We're yeah, talking about. That's what I think too. Tell I, me. I think it's a mixture of things. It's um, this big awareness we have now with social media. Um, it's, you know, it's all about my selfie, the way I take it, the angle I take it, what's my Instagram, my Insta, you know, it's all about this. So there's a lot of also, let's face it, instant gratification, you know, I mean, it's the, we, we, it's, it's become much more tangible in, in our society. So also procedures are much safer nowadays. They become more affordable. That's um, it. You know, more so affordable, more, we know more, we see more. Exactly. We can reach, reach out to them more. Um, having said all that, um, even though I am totally um, for, obviously, these procedures, again, not for everybody, you know, um, but um, I'm also a very big firm believer in body modification through exercise, for example, which we haven't touched on. But um, it's something which I, I, I feel very passionate about because, unfortunately, and I'm not speaking about your case because I totally understand, but many people want quick fixes, mm. irrespective of whether it's good for them or not. And I, I really d- disagree with that totally. 
you know. Oh, that's a whole show there. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to come into that detail because I have a bunch of questions about when you as a doctor yeah. have to say no and also how invasive these these procedures are. But coming to you, before we come to Theresa, but coming to you, Sue, you, you've been in the business for a while. You must have seen a trend. You must have seen how things are changing. Things, things have changed a lot in that um, they've become... So, like, if I go back to people's attitude towards, say, Botox and fillers, um, let's say, 10 years ago, it was more... Uh, something that if you had done, you didn't want to talk to people about, mm -hmm. you wouldn't want to tell them. Um, the, the way it was done as well was a little bit more obvious. So if somebody had their Botox done, they would have this kind of frozen kind of a look. Um, so it, it wasn't the beginning 10 years ago, but it was the beginning in, in the sense that it takes a very long time for something to become mainstream or normal, let's say. For the say. stigma to wear off. Uh -huh. Yeah. So um, the trends have changed. Education has increased. Um, the results are very different today as they were 10, days ago, uh, 10 years ago. So, for example, I have my face is full of Botox and fillers, but, uh, but I don't think that many people would look at me and think, mm -hmm. oh, my God, how much mm -hmm. you had. But I'm telling you, I have and Nicola has done all of the pricking and poking and whatever. And I'm telling you, I am full of it. So I have it in my lips, I have it in my cheeks, I have it in my forehead, I have it everywhere. Um, but it hasn't given me some um, Barbie um, look or very fake look. So the, the trend has, has changed a lot in how it is done and the results that you get. It has also become a little bit more affordable. It is something that we are exposed to because we're on Instagram, on TikTok, exactly. on Facebook. We're exposed to it all the time as well. So we see it and it has become normal. So as much as you go home and cook and eat and whatever, and that's your normal routine as well, you also go and have your Botox done, your fillers done, and this is the norm. You know? And, and as so, Sue's saying, in fact, I totally agree. Um, I see this with a lot of patients who may be coming and they're not sure, you know about Botox and fillers. And the problem is that it's the bad work that people see. Because if you, if someone's had what I would consider bad work and it's obvious, for me, aesthetics shouldn't be obvious. It should be that you look totally natural. Sure. Exactly. So this is really, it's something that uh, I really feel strongly about. If, if you, you've had work and it's natural, people aren't going to realize you're just going to look a better version of Trudy. You know, you're going to look a fresh air. There's, Trudy, also an addiction. To... There's also an addiction yeah. factor. Oh, oh, oh you're mm -hmm. jumping straight yeah. into a question down here. We're going to come to that in a second uh, because there is, an, because addiction there is factor, an addiction. Yeah? And I've seen this trend in people my age. Yep. And I'm, I'm very self-aware as I myself get older and I'm more challenged that it could <laughs> be... <laughs> Well, what else oh, is it? But gravity challenge. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's a gravity challenge going on um, that, that I could slip into that. So we're going to talk about that in a second. Yeah. But based on what you just guys have just said, I want to come to Teresa's story because you are probably at the extreme of body modification in that the surgery that you've had is very invasive, but also in your case, the results have been astounding. So tell me about your journey, because I didn't realize it was only six months ago. Yes, um, six months ago. It was um, July 29th. Wow. Uh, I lost 30 kilos so far, and I want to lose another seven. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I'm nearly there, but then you have to do... I'm doing exercise, so um, a lot of people tells me that it's the easy way out, and I'm... Sh I can assure you that it's not. No, it? It's not. Um, you have to be prepared, mentally prepared. You have to be sure that you <clears throat> want it. Um, um, but going back a little way, because you just saying that, I mean, I definitely would think that that perhaps it's the easy way out. And I think that's a that's a misconception yes, that a lot of people say, would think. Mm, she, she cut the, let's say, cut. She, she cut the stomach for sure she lose weight. It's not for sure. And it's not easy. You get side effects and you get things. So we're going to come to that in a second as well. Mm -hmm. But before we get there, why did you go to this procedure? Why did, what led you to be <laughs> at this point? Because, um, how can I say it? Uh, I tried all the diets possible, all the gym things and all the exercises. 
And as a person, I'm not motivated. Um, I'm very naughty. <laughs> I start I Monday. By naughty I people. start Monday, and I and and you finish Monday. Yes, <laughs> I start. By, I start Monday morning, and by Monday ten o'clock, but, I'm done. But when I'm telling you I'm done at Monday at noon, like uh, I'm at work, <laughs> and they say we get a burger. I said yes, I'll start tomorrow, and tomorrow will never come for like six another months, and I will get another ten kil- gained ten kilos, and then the amount of kilos were too too big for just a diet or a, and uh, I said this yeah. ma. I'm nearly 40 now. I spent That's it. my life trying. Now I want to change, seriously. And I'm nearly 40 and I did it. So you <laughs> chose, so, yeah. you must have researched and, and come across. Did anyone yes. suggest this to you? Did anyone say you should do it? Or did you see it online? Or, or how did you come to I, that I, I, I On Facebook, you see a lot of people changes. But unfortunately, no one tells you that he did it. I don't mm-hmm. know why, because I... I told um, everyone online that I did it two days after. Mm. I didn't want to have any secrets. My life is an open book. Um, I don't know why they they are ashamed of... I mean, we did it and we did it. Um, um, I speak about it and I... You do. And it's really... It's one of the reasons I'm a big, big fan. Because you're so open yes, about yes. what's Even happened. I, I put on stories like eating because I get questions every day. But do you eat? But do you work? Do you... Yes, I eat. I eat less. My portions are smaller, but I eat, obviously. So you went and had the surgery, signed up for the surgery. Mm-hmm. Was the surgery painful? No. Oh, wow. No, 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 no. No pain at all. I only... This was keyhole. You did it keyhole? Yes, yes. I have five, five key... Uh-huh. Okay. No, just the, the anesthetic made me feel a bit sick, sick but that's all. And in so... two days I was, I was at home because I did it in Malta. Fantastic. Okay, so two days later you're at home and you're sort of leading a normal life. Yes, yes, yes. But what was the instant difference? I'm assuming the instant difference was that gastric bypass does what? It, it makes you have stomach... to uh, stay on liquid diet for uh, like 10 days or 12 and then put a stage for 12 and other days. Those are hard. Those are hard because you, you see food, you have to prepare. I have two children and my nana living with me and the husband. I had to wake up and cook for them, but I didn't lose my appetite or my love for for food or for kitchen i i I cooked for them as well but but it's hard Mm -hmm. because you you have to take water or jelly or yogurt but i wanted it and i didn't look for those 10 days i'm looking at long term yes one year in in time So, Teresa, one of the things that is quite astounding is that you're, and I, I honestly didn't realize it was just six months because your posts are frequent and incredibly impactful because you're very honest and you show before and after. Mm-hmm. And you've had results very, very quickly. As you said, 30 kilos in less than six months, which is it. When you went through the surgery, is that what you expected? Did you expect to have such quick results? I still don't believe that I did it. If it's, it's sounds funny, but I look in the mirror and I say, that's me. Cause I'm used to my big me. Even if I go in shops, I don't go in the normal stands. No, I go in the, in the plus sizes and my son tells me, mom, that's too big for you. Because I I'm, I'm tend to buy big stuff. And now I, I have to get used to it. it, it it's it's not a big... I mean, it's, it's a big thing. Because I, I still can cannot I, believe can I it. Ask you, though, did you get... Because one of the things with your kind of surgery that I think is lacking is, is the psychological, like the um therapy to help you prepare and after as well that there isn't anything locally as well for those who are doing it locally and those locally who are going up to turkey to do it that there isn't any psychological help with it and you really need it it's when i I did my concert no no um me as a person i'm i don't know how to explain it but 
if I say I want to do it or if I get the challenge, I, I'm up to it. So I was 100% prepared. So if they, they're eating, I don't miss food. But that's me. But I know people that tell me, but you don't miss food or you don't go out and eat. I go out and eat. But I don't eat like I used to do. So you are motivated in a way. Yes. But. Yes. And I I, I, I think that I was motivated and I didn't find the right yes. thing I needed That's to. exactly what I think too from what you spoke. Exactly. Because huh. now I, I know what I want and I know I know where I want to go, so I am motivated. But it's a complete lifestyle change. This is as me. opposed to someone to having, me. with all due respect, Botox yes. or lip fillers, which are amazing. Yes. Uh, this is life changing. Yes. This is, uh, you look at the photos of you, and also not just the photos of you, but the way that you stand. And I had another thing. My mo- my mother used to be overweight. My nana is overweight, and I didn't want to continue. And my daughter now she's seven, and she's into gymnastics and she's into healthy eating. And I wanted to stop this overweight thing in my family. And I said, I want to do it. Like, good for you. Mm-hmm. And wh- I think when you want something so badly, you'll work hard for it because. 39, let's say 38 years of being 29 from 10 years. Because my, consulta- my my doctor told me how long you want to be, um, how long you've tried. I said, I'm 39, I tried 29 of them, 29 years. To lose weight. Yes. Because from 15, I think I was starting to be obese and then time flies. <laughs> Can I ask you, it, have there been... Any either negative physical or emotional areas to related to the surgery, but also maybe negative responses. Has anyone ever kind of come back to you and gone now or mm. before? No, now afterwards. Now, yes. Like for example, from eight thousand comments, you'll get one or two. But because I think, how do you say it? People, they don't want to see you happy and they don't mm-hmm. want to be better than them. Because the people, truth is they really... don't want to tell you the, the truth. If I say, they, they they tell me, you were beautiful before. Okay, I wasn't ugly, but I wasn't healthy and I wasn't That's happy. It. But they are not um, true. How, how do you say it? Because because they're they're, 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 they're not, not genuine. honest. Yes, not yes, genuine. Yes. Genuine. yes. I think, I think, I think, especially like with you, because you were plus size, a lot of people who feel bad about themselves can relate mm-hmm. to you. People who ha- <clears throat> fe- don't feel so great about themselves cannot relate so much to somebody who looks perfect, to so- somebody who's a size 10, who, who has great hair. And I'm not perfect. Books, I always tell them I'm, I'm so, now, not perfect now and I will never be because no one is perfect. But as so saying, when they, they see you, yes, you, yes, 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 it's like it's like that saying that misery loves company. You know what I mean? You're mm-hmm. feeling miserable, mm-hmm. so you look at somebody and you say that. So now, when they see that change happening, mm. and like I told you as well, I can see even with your posts, even if they are in the before and after, but I can see the way you're dressing, the way you're holding yourself. I can see you're feeling good. You're looking good, but you're feeling good as well. So then there are certain people who can relate to that and who are happy for it. But then you're always going to find, and when you're online, there are always going to be those trolls that say, you know, look at you and she's feeling better about herself. So now I'm not going to like her anymore and I'm going to get... You know, yes. So, they but the negative just mm-hmm. themselves. So, because the but but the reflection is not on you and what you did. The the reflection of that uh, of those comments is on mm-hmm. themselves and about how they feel about exactly. themselves. Yes. So you know, but you're always going to. Uh, well, you mentioned to because that. you've just so you've just mentioned online. You've Teresa, you've just mentioned online, and Nikki, you started on talking about this instant culture, this instant gratification culture, talking about the Insta stories, the Insta selfies, these sorts of things. And this is this is the world that we live in today, yes. where where everything has to be now beautiful. Now, you can do that, of course, with filters. But what this body modification is allowing us to do is actually do it in, in real time mm-hmm. to our actual bodies. So <clears throat> Teresa's story is amazing. But before we go on to talk about other aspects of this, I just want to touch on 
Are there any negative implications of having invasive or non-invasive procedures? You're the doctor, whether it's psychological or physical, are there negative sides to this? There are negative sides to everything, I think. But in this case, um, it's multifaceted because um, you can have the majority of, of people who, who walk through the door for, in the clinic are going to want um, their 38 plus feeling, you know, that's like uh, I'm seeing a few lines coming out. I'm feeling old suddenly. Um, and they just want something to live themselves up, to live them up. But there's a negative side to when you have people who where it becomes when as an injector, I should realize that there's an addiction going on. You know, the same person comes in and they always want to do something, even when I personally don't think they need anything else done. And they, they are insistent and you realize that there's more to it. It's not just because they want to feel good, but they, there's something. They're either repl- using this to replace something in their lives or there's a psychological issue going on mm. and they actually need more help. Now, obviously, I'm not only an injector, I, I, I'm a doctor and I can, and before, obviously I worked in family medicine, so that does, does give me, a, it does help me. Um, but you have to, I feel you have to go through to reach out to the person. Because that's a negative side. I don't so, want them so give using... So give me an example. So that just for, for myself or someone else who's right. not in your industry, because Sue had already mentioned yeah. uh, addiction and we'll come to Sue in a second. But but give me an example. Are we talking about somebody who just keeps coming back for more Botox? Yeah, or... They have what, what was called as body dysmorphic image. So they'd come and they, they have they had their lips done and they're fine. And then they might go elsewhere and get more lip filler. And it's not to my liking. So they come back and I'm like... Um, yes, of course, I've had more lip filler than yes, I can see that. Um, and in, in my opinion, they they look unnatural. She might be happy with them, all well and good, but I'm definitely not going to inject more in there. And they come back, sit there, and they say, but I want more, you know, I want more in my lips. I like them bigger. I like them like the, the people on Instagram. I want to Before have all of this, we used to have retail therapy. You'd have an argument with your ex or your boyfriend or your yes. husband or yeah. whatever. You'd have True. a bad day. You'd go out and you'd spend some money. Right, Very true. retail therapy. Now yep. we have, and now it's metastatic therapy. Metastatic therapy, totally, and also the, the usual. Generally, most women that come through, even men, I do these treatments. Let me just I haven't we haven't mentioned men here, but most of the, the women that come, they will say, "Listen, I'm not going to tell my my other half because uh-huh. because he's not keen, mm. or because especially when lips are involved, I see it a lot. I think the partners have this image of they equate. Um, lip fillers with big sexy lips promiscuity and they don't want their partner to to be now they're totally wrong because in actual fact the lip fillers that what we practice in our clinic at least are very natural and just like an oomph you know like a bit of hydration so most people wouldn't even probably realize they just think you have a lovely lip gloss on all right but the image the stigma is there and many 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 men don't want their partners to come out have these lips that they think are going to, they're going to be like that. So they're like, listen, I want to do something, but I don't want it to show, you know? So there's a lot of this going on. Now, whether it's stigma, ignorance, I don't know. You know, as I said, bad work sticking in your mind and not the natural ones could be as well. Um, but back to what you asked, the negative. In actual fact, most aesthetic, aesthetic treatments are reversible or temporary. So they're gonna they're gonna go. Botox is gonna go within the ones four used to six now months. because the before now, before yes. before they weren't so temporary. There still are, before, uh, some. The, uh, there are still I, I mean, we've it. seen a lot of celebrities whose, yes. whose aesthetic treatments have gone wrong. Some the fillers before they used to use silicone, which is why we have so many you know old old celebrities with these horrible, horrible duck lips because yes, yes, the silicone yes. is there, and as they're going to remove it and surgically, yeah. it's there. Whereas the fillers used nowadays um, can be dissolved. There still are fillers used that are um, irreversible. Personally, I, I, I don't really like to use them, but um, the majority of them are reversible and they break down. But you're mentioning about going too far. Mm-hmm. And I think and, and what a, a husband or a partner or whatever might think of the word lip filler or plastic surgery or even even you know, Botox, Botox and these sorts of things. And I think for, for a lot of us, a lot of us coming in that sort of late 30s, that would be our, our perceptions. Because, for instance, if you look at someone like Madonna, mm-hmm. I happened to catch her on YouTube oh with my her new God, single though, but recently. I mean, I mean, but she, she is somebody that I... I idolized yes, as a back as, she exactly just doesn't want to, but she doesn't want but to get old. But, uh, but 
Because Look, you can't is, even is such recognize a, who she is. It's such to accept a aging complicated. Aim. It is such a complicated. There are so many aspects yeah. to it. It's such a complicated subject. So, from the husband's point of view, a husband or a man, let's say a man, um, uh, or uh, if we want to be politically correct, a, a person who was born with a penis, because now we don't have this men and female. Okay, so let's not. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so. Um, they want to look at pictures mm -hmm. of perfect women with nice, mm -hmm. big, full mm -hmm. lips and whatever. But they don't want their partners to look like that because they don't want their partners What's to be that? attractive exactly. to anybody mm -hmm. else. Okay, so we have that kind of aspect coming from the partner or the husband. So they don't like their wives to have their lips filled and their brows done and blah, 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 because they want their wives to look like their mothers. That's what they want. I mean, in the sense it's that it's them. not it's that they, they it's safer. They don't want other people to be looking at their partners, but their partners are doing this to make themselves more attractive to their husbands because they look as well at these perfect dolly people on Instagram and whatever. And they think, well, that's what I want to look at because my husband obviously likes looking at it. So I want to look like that. And that's how I want to be for him. So you have this whole psychological um thing which is it, it i mean it's so complicated we can talk about it for days and days and days it, it, it's it's a very complicated issue and then you have the the thing about you yourself and and sort of like this retail therapy kind of attitude yes. where you know you're having a bad day or you're feeling a bit depressed or you're menopausal and you're you're, you're aging and and let's face it I'm happy that I'm still here. I'm 52. I'm happy I'm still alive. I'm happy that I'm still relatively well and whatever. But I hate it. I hate the aging. aging yeah. I don't. I hate it with a passion. I hate looking in the mirror and seeing that everything is going down. My brain, it's like as if my brain, I'm just ready to deal with life. And I've gotten over all of those hang ups. And now here I am. And my body is failing me just when my head has kind of like, got, I've just That's got the myself irony, sorted. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So <laughs> I spent exactly. years in therapy. I spent years going to, to, to counseling and whatever to get rid of all of that shit. And now here I am and I'm ready to go. And bloody hell, my body's, you know, my body now is, is like an old Letting woman. I'm 50 bloody too. Like, what the fuck is that? You know, like, you know, so. But let, let me, I, you said something really interesting there. And I want to put this to you, Teresa, because Sue said, we, do, we change ourselves, we modify ourselves, we improve ourselves because we want to impress or gain the interest of our partner, our husband, our wife, whoever it is. Is that why you went through that procedure for your husband or was it for mm. you? I think that's different. Well, I think different. Teresa's different. Weight loss is different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, what do you tell no, me? No, I did it for myself. I'm now where I supposed to be 20 years ago. It was, it was always my dream. Mm -hmm. um, um, I knew always where I wanted to be, but I couldn't reach it, if I can say it. Weight loss is a bit different. Yes. Um, but, but but is I mean because I'm really glad. If to you hear. had to ask my husband, we've been together since I was 15. He said he he says that he was fine with it because he knew me like this forever. So How does he feel now? He's getting used to it, I think. <laughs> you, you see. You see? Because I, do you know how many clients I have that uh, but husbands he was, didn't want? Yes, them yes, to yes, have yes. It? I get he messages every day, but my husband, um, he gives me support. Like, he pays, for example, he's not into tattoo, but if I want to get a tattoo, I can do a tattoo because I want to do it. It's me, um, but he he was full support. He was afraid for sure because it's something big. But, um, uh, well, let's bring it back. To you, Nikki, because what Sue has just said is really profound. Uh, yes, the I, women... I remember because I, I get memory loss. But I get messages every day that my husband doesn't leave he me doesn't to do it. Me. He doesn't want me to do it. I say, now, to, 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 2023, Madonna. Um, you have to ask permission. I mean... No, because the husband thinks... Yes. Because <laughs> now what she'll do is she'll lose weight. Uh -huh. And then she's going to leave me. She's yes. going to go and have... Mine. But, but it is so 
little coming to you, Nikki, and let's bring it back from weight loss to to let's say fillers or uh, Botox or any of these other aesthetic uh, medical medical procedures. Is is it because the woman wants her husband, her partner, or any other potential person that that might show some interest to look upon them more favorably? I think <clears throat> it's more for themselves. There is that aspect that Sue mentioned, but I think the majority of, of, of women I see, um, they panic because they start seeing lines coming out here and there, Thank or you. as the usual thing, you know, they come and say, my face is going down. I want to lift it up. You know, this is the usual thing. Um, and that's why I said, because overseas, UK, USA, the trend for Botox is to start in the 20s mm. to actually prevent getting the line at all. So we don't even get to the static line. Because basically, they're not sure. Botox in your 20s. Yes, yes. of course. It's a big You're supposed trend. to start by 24. Yes. You're supposed to start <clears throat> with Botox. We so, over here, we started in our yeah, 30s. We started, once we've started with the line. 30s. No, you're supposed so, to start before. If you're lucky, before. you start in yeah. 30s. So basically, they start before you actually, because as you know, um, Botox is going to sort of work against the, the, the wrinkles we form. Which are, take a moment just to explain exactly what it is yes, and what exactly. it does, because so, not everybody knows. So Botox um, works on the muscles. It's injected into muscle. Now, what it does is it will temporarily paralyze the muscle. Um, and obviously, the muscle is, when it contracts, it causes a, a, a line in the skin. Now, when we're younger, those lines are what we call dynamic because they're there when you make the expression only, and then they vanish. As you grow older, not everybody's the same, but 35 plus, those lines are there even when you're not making the movement. So you just start forming lines on the forehead, on the crow's feet, or where we frown. Because you frown so much at your children all the time yeah, that you're exactly. angry. Constantly. Or at your husband, you're constantly frowning. Those come out that more. it becomes permanent. Exactly. In fact, you find people saying, listen, I don't want to remove these because they, they're signs that I smile a lot, that I laugh a lot. But ultimately, they're all contributing to our aging process. So what Botox does is that if it's injected in that muscle, then the muscle will relax and the, the line won't form or it will soften. Okay, because it depends how deep that is. So that's it in a nutshell. It breaks down and it's, the literature will tell you four to six months, but in actual fact, three. I'd say around three to four month mark, it starts wearing off. Um, so that's, that's what Botox does in a nutshell. Fillers are a different story. Fillers are hyaluronic acid, which we already have in our bodies and which we lose, which is what contributes to the aging process. Okay. So face starts going down because you start using your, losing your HA. So that's what fillers, most fillers are made of, plus some anesthetic inside. And they have a different role. So they're not going to relax any muscle. They're going to be used to replace a contour that you've lost. With age, we lose our cheeks. They sort of start coming down. Or lips, with age, they thin. Some people already have thin lips, and then they end up with practically nothing. So Phil is used to either recreate to um, enhance angles. Let's say men would like to increase their jaw angle. It's considered more manly. At the end of the day, it's all about ratios. And it's all about facial harmony. You know, so... And everybody is different. So no face is the same. So it's useless you coming in front of me. People come with photos with photo that they get from, from Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> and they say, I want to have... I want to look like this. I want to have the celebrity's lips. You can't. Obviously, I have to be careful with the way I phrase it. But listen, I'm, I'm not God Almighty. I've got to work with what I have. It's... Did you just say I'm not God Almighty? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I tell, my, I tell my, 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 my clients, I don't have a magic wand. I'm not Harry yeah. Potter. I really wish I was, <laughs> it's, but I don't have a magic it's wand. It's not to be know? condescending anyway, but it's, it's what I'm trying to it's get true. through is I, I have to work with the canvas I'm, I'm given. That's I'm not it. saying it's a bad canvas, but it's totally different to We're all unique. Who, who's ever's canvas, you know? So let's work. If I did these lips on you, they would not look good because the rest of your face is different. Yeah. So um, even when, when we examine people, when we have a look, it's not just the front. For example, most people, we all think we all think that we know what we look like. No. And actually, in fact, we don't know what we look like. We never see ourselves from the side. We don't see the way we are interacting from prof on profile. In fact, I hate my profile. When I see a photo of my profile, I hate it. So it makes a big difference, you know? So to, um, when, when, I, when I look at someone's face, I don't just look at it full on. You look at it from the side and you see the proportions. So hence, it's not what the people think they ought to need. Then that's where the injector side comes in. You know, and the know-how. So if someone comes to you, at their, their 20, Sue just mentioned 20. Mm -hmm. And then we, we spoke a minute ago, Teresa, about whether or not you and I, us, would be interested in these, these procedures. Personally, I'm 
very happy with Botox. But if somebody comes to you in their, but I'm, I'm, you're 39, I'm 48. If somebody comes to you in their 20s, mm. you just mentioned women in their 20s, they're coming to you in their 20s to have that done. Mm. Mm. Would you be happy to do that? So I treat every case differently. If it's somebody who's come in and she's, she doesn't have anything at all, she looks, she's flawless at this age, you know, many good skin and everything. Personally, <clears throat> I'm not going to, Tell them no, but I'm going to explain, listen, this is something which you can stop doing when you want because you don't have to keep doing Botox because you started. But think of it, if you're going to keep up maintenance from now, it's an added expense, you're still really young, you don't really need it. Fine, it's going to prevent, but you're still in your early 20s. So it's up to you if you really want to do it. My your friends are all it doing since it. since she was 25. Yeah. My daughter's 30, she's been doing it since she was 24 or 25. So... It's but can you really stop? I mean, seriously, can you stop? So, yes. so for instance, yes, you, you said... You just go back to what you were. Uh-huh. Which is going to be but, shocking. But, 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 hold yeah. on a, but hold on a second. My daughter started when she was 24, okay? With my encouragement. So, maybe that makes me a, not a, a good mother. I don't know. But I it's encourage her to do it. <laughs> but if she decides to stop at 40... When she stops at 40, the wrinkles are still where she started at 24... She's not going to stop at 40 and have a 40-year-old uh, deep-set wrinkle no, because it, it has never, it never created. Will, it will, aging will just continue and... It will start at that point. The aging then, the, the, the wrinkles will start when she stops. You, you understand what I'm yes, saying? Yes, absolutely. Because she started so, so young. So because she started in, young. In, in comparison to somebody, let's say... If I had to... You know, when you already have a certain amount of static lines... They'll come back. And then, and you start... Yeah. What well, they do sometimes, people come and obviously I encourage them to have the best results, to have an overlap. So listen, don't come and see Megan in two years because by the time it's all out, you're going to go back to what you were. Actually, you want to time has passed, you're you going to get worse. To and also, you know, there's not that continuity of results. So you want to be now have a softened wrinkles forever now. Not you keep going back, wrinkles, no wrinkles. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I encourage them to keep it up. But if they have to stop it then... The wrinkles are just going to come back and then she's going to continue aging normally. Obviously, it's depressing because so like you've seen yourself case, without they're going them. to come back. Because when I started, I already had a deep set wrinkle, two over here. So if I had to stop today, then that deep set wrinkle is going to come back and it's going to be there how it was when I started. Okay. But if my daughter, who started at 24 without any deep set wrinkle, stops when she's 40... She doesn't have a deep set wrinkle. Then it's going to start at that age. You know, you're prolonging so you are, where the starting point you're is. You're effectively pausing time. Yes. In a so certain, as to, to say, a certain point. Yes. A certain so, point. So let me come again. I want to come back to something that we've all touched on, but not gone into any particular detail. All of us have mentioned this sort of. Yes, I. I. You. Sue. You were talking about addiction and and. Com of course, it is addictive. But but Teresa, you said I've had my. My gastric bypass, I've lost my weight. And you said if I wanted to have a tattoo. But you also mentioned off air that you got your tattoo and you'd be quite interested in getting another one. Body modification does have that yes. implication that once you start, mm -hmm. yes. other things become more acceptable. So where do we stop and how do we stop? Because I've also noticed and the statistics show that breast surgery yes. or mm -hmm. liposuction is also very, very much more normal these days and much more accepted. Is this where we want to go? Do we want to keep going in a direction where we're body I, modifying? I think it's, it's more the feeling you get. So let's say, let's speak about breasts, um, not only augmentation, but corrective surgery, lifts, you know, mother's person, you know, I have three young kids. I mean, with breastfeeding, you, you're not going to remain what you were. And you you need that you need that boost you know literally uh, so you like you don't once need it you want it you want it you want it you're Plus not the person well, you wear there are, there are a lot of different aspects to this first of all life expectancy as well has increased over time so whereas before we used to live until 50 60 whatever now we're living to 80 90 and we want to look younger for life longer life expect expectancy is 80 so for it women. has increased a lot yes that's that, that that's the one one aspect of it but it, 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 it is such a, um, the, the addictiveness as well of it is, you have to be very careful as to who you're going. So like, say, for example, I 
hate having it done because I feel a lot of pain. So I will go into Nikki and I'll tell her, oh, I'm going to have my lips done. And then I'll make the biggest fuss while you're having it done. <laughs> Is that true. right? It's true. I make it because I'm super, super sensitive. So I know that I'm going in for this torture session. I When I'm there, I mean, I'm Big just husband. like all <laughs> clenched up like this and I'm as solid as a rock. But even though I know what I'm going to go through, I want to have it. And why? Because that first week after I have it, I feel, I still feel it. They're sort of like a little bit hard and I can still feel the, the filler and touch it. And I love it. Why do I love it? But I do. I do. I, I keep touching my lips. And for the first week, they feel a little bit lumpy. And I, lo I love that. And with my tongue, I'll keep going over it and feeling them. I, do, I mean, am and I getting some kind in, of pleasure? And then like the results. And then, I, and then they set it. So there's a whole process to it. So I like how they look afterwards. I like how they look when they're swollen. I like how they feel. And with the, I don't like the pain of doing it, but I'll go through the pain and complain and moan to get afterwards. But then if I go to Nikki next month and I tell her I want to do my lips, she won't let me do them again because it's too soon. So you have to be able to control it. And these people then that you're saying that go over the top, they don't control and their injector mm -hmm. doesn't control either because their injector is more money focused than result focused because you have to be with somebody like I trust her and Debbie blindly, Nikki and Debbie blindly. And I know that if I go in and I say, listen, I want to do this and it's going to look ridiculous, they're going to tell me no. So I won't even go and ask because I know <laughs> from knows. before that it's going to be a no. But I know how to control and they also know how to control because they are not money focused. They are as injectors, they are result focused. So you have that aspect. But from the addiction point of view, if I could go to, to a hospital <coughs> and sign myself in and stay there for a month of having treatment after treatment, I would. I mean, sign I'm me so up. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you're so up. honest. I'm an addictive personality. Yes, sign me it. up. Yeah. I would love to have it all done. Well, then let me ask you, Teresa, you've had this incredible surgery. You look amazing. And you've opened the kind of the gate of having procedures. So now that you've had this done, you've lost the weight, you look incredible. Would Are you now more inclined to consider to have... I don't know, maybe um, Botox in, or a breast augmentation or anything Botox, like that. I don't, I don't mind having it. If I need it, I, I will get it. Um, I soon will be needing a tummy tuck. It's something that you cannot... Because of the excess skin. Of the skin. Yes. Mm. But I'll take my time and when, it, when I'm ready and when I need to do it, I'll do it. But <clears throat> before your procedure, before you had the gastric bypass before you went down this route would you ever have considered having a tummy tuck or having uh, botox or having fillers or anything like that has it changed the way you see these things but i always loved these things i always loved fashion i i always wanted to look good and i always loved my doing nails and That's doing it. looking after yourself but I had something missing. That's it. Because mm -hmm. until she lost the weight, yes. she wouldn't have started doing the yes. Botox and the fillers Even and the stuff. It, like I do TikToks and I always I love to dance. But when I used to dance... You were self-conscious before probably. Yes. And now I I do it because from the inside I'm the same person. But I, I feel You're different. confident. Yeah. Your and confidence even, is coming out. Like for example, now. how can I say it? Um... The opportunities, people say that they are the same. Unfortunately, no. they're not. No. If you don't have the whole package, you don't get there. It's not nice to say it, but it's but the it's reality. The truth. It's it is the, the truth. It's, truth. it's human it's the truth. I, I in, this, in this world we're living, like for example, if we go buy clothes together, I tell you, listen, buy this one because I love it on you and I'm honest. But honest people, they're not so... Look... <laughs> You're Teresa, right, what, right. Teresa, one of the things that I've I've noticed about you on TikTok and on Insta, on your Insta reels and so on, is that you are incredibly cheerful. You bring this big smile, and I'd recommend to anybody to follow you because it just <laughs> when you come up on my stream, but there are simple things. I mean, normal. But she's things. also very real. Yes, yes. She's but, miserable sometimes. No, as well. no, you have bad days. Sure. You have good days. But 
Before good. your surgery, mm -hmm. would you have been A, as confident or B, as cheery <coughs> to post on social? Yes. You haven't changed in that regard no, at no, all? No, no. That's me from from forever. <laughs> so it's just in high I cry a lot and I laugh a lot. I'm bubbly, I'm crazy, I'm loud, but then I'm super sensitive, I'm mm. super... Mm. I've been following Teresa for, for many years. Yes, yes, yes. So when her mother got sick, mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. her mother was very ill, when her mother passed and away... And that's changed me a lot, eh? Afterwards... When, I, when my mother was in the last month i saw the it was very bad yes, you yes. Were bad. and i realized what life is and i where i want to be and what is worth it and what is not and, life is too short, yeah. and yes yes, mm. yes yes well then let me come back to you nikki because i'm going to follow up on something you said before we talked about this instagram we talked about tiktok we talked about this image but yet we're all sitting around the table loving teresa because of her honesty and mm -hmm. and with all due respect you aren't a page three model. You aren't, you know, you aren't on the catwalk. You are a woman who's living a very real story and it's you very look simple amazing. Life. I mean, uh, you look amazing, but the, but your story is real. So where does that work? Where do we fit? I mean, are we just lost right now? Because I think what we <clears> want <throat> is Teresa, but, but what we yeah. feel <laughs> aesthetically yes, that we true. should be looking at is we relate. The difference we, is here. We relate to Teresa. We aspire to some top model or whatever. Because we, we seek perfection. The that Kardashians. Is we aspire to the Kardashian, but we relate to Teresa. And that's why Teresa is so popular. Because when somebody is looking at her, you're seeing real life. And it is she's authentic. So when she's having a bad day, and there are, some, there are a couple of Instagrammers locally, influencers that are very real and that you are relatable because they're very truthful. And when they're having a bad day, they're having a bad day. And when they're having a good day, they are. And then the rest of them on, on social media are always having this great, uh, everything is Which perfect. Is totally that's, 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 yes. That's not so true. true. But you, <laughs> I couldn't agree more, but you also mentioned the Cardassians and the Cardassians have fallen from grace because I feel like, well, yeah, I think so. Do you not think Cardassians have fallen from grace where we're yeah. actually really now quite bored of I, this? I, I, I yes, don't no, I'm bored. Them. Them. We're, we're bored of this. this and I don't particularly aspire I, to have their lifestyle either <laughs> or, or their aspirations. But young say. people yeah. do. Young yeah. people yes. look at them and this is what they want. Yeah. Yes, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Um, but it's it's a, it's a fine line because there's a difference between going into a clinic, an aesthetic clinic, and getting something because there's something that really bothers you, like, or for example, having a breast lift or a breast augmentation because you've always hated them and you've hit 40 and now you want to do something about it, mm -hmm. you know? And there's a difference with, with it ruling your life and you constantly at it and you're never happy. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. When are you going to be happy? When you've reached perfection? What is perfection? Was perfection to you? But let's go back me. 50 years ago before there was Instagram and before the Kardashians because the Kardashians did bring a lot. Uh, but there this, was much this... less of all, they say. Much less plastic surgery happening. Much less of yes, everything. Yes, there was, but people weren't so acceptance. unhappy. People 50, 60 years ago weren't so unhappy. They were, with unha their... they were happier, exactly. With their imperfections as they are but now. Because they couldn't do much about it. Now when you know you can do something about it, it's different. Mm. That's the way I see it. Mm. If you know you, you can fix it. <laughs> Sorry, I like the way Sue just went. Mm. Ah, because you know now, you if know, you want it's to have a, a bigger, complicated bigger bottom, subject, you can, have, you can have implants. If you want to have a smaller one, you can have liposuction. Yeah. liposuction. If you don't like your boobs, you can change them. If you want them smaller, you can change them. But what? You can do everything. Okay, you know? so I'm, I'm gonna we're gonna sort of head towards the end. We could be here for hours <laughs> so talking about complex. this. It so is so complex. Complicated. But you just said there, Nikki, if you want to have a smaller ass, you can get it. If you want to have a bigger <laughs> butt, you can get it. If you want to have bigger boobs, you I can don't get necessarily it. agree with it, but that's the but way it can. is now. But that's yeah. where I'm that's kind of where I want to to leave this show. I think we're gonna have to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> of course we are. I say this every time we finish a show. But where do we find balance? And I'm going to ask each of you mm -hmm. to define the balance for yourself and the lessons that you've learned. And I'm going to start with you, Nikki. Where do we find balance? Where do you say to someone, yeah, I think you could do with a little bit of, of filler on your lip or, or actually, you know what, you need to slow down there. Yeah. And actually, you know, this is not reality that you're living in. And your bit of advice. The balance for me is, first of all, always using empathy. And I would never, like somebody who walks into the clinic, I never ever venture out and say, okay, so I think you need 
this isn't this. I never do that. I always hand the mirror over mm-hmm. and ask them, what's bothering you? What, what's bothering you? What do you not like? What do you want me to fix or try to fix? And, you know, you'd be surprised with what comes out because it's not necessarily what I see. You know, I may have already decided, uh, you know, this is wrong. But she said, you know, for example, I really don't like this hump in my nose. You know, my, all my family has it and I really don't like it. And they, they won't even know certain options that are available because fillers can help there, for example. And then I'll go with that, you know. So I'm, I'm not there and, and the balance will be reached. If, for example, somebody comes along and says, I want more cheeks. Cheeks are already really full. I'm not going to feel bad in saying, listen, I really don't think you need cheeks at all. You know, your cheeks are fine. Um, and I'll explain, you know, I'll explain the, 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 way, the way they're looking. But for example, if you're going to keep doing your cheeks, then your temples are going to look less. It's all, all harmony. So if anything, if you really want to do a filler, go for something you, you, you could benefit from, which would be this, for example. So th- there's a way of saying, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a way of doing it. Um, and ultimately, although I think that we all deep down, we, we do strive for an element of perfection, we have to appreciate as well that there's perfection in, in imperfections. And that's what makes us all different. You know, so I love that. I, I haven't, it. I haven't found the appreciation <laughs> yet. <laughs> we'll try, we'll try. I'm looking for it. I haven't found it. But so tell me, tell me, because you, you obviously advise a lot of women as well. You are also very active on, on social media. You have a voice. You have an audience. Where would you find? How do you find balance? And what would you suggest to any woman? You know, I just, I mean, I've always known that this was such a complicated um, subject. And sitting here today, I've realized just how complicated it is and how it, how um, it is uniquely, it is individually uniquely to each and every person what their balance is and what that person wants and how to make that person happy. Um, I've had many things done. So I, I've had my boobs done. I've I, I've had a lot done. And I would be very happy to have a lot more done as well. But uh, um, inside my head, in my, in my mind's eye, I have a vision of what is aesthetically beautiful. And so that's where my balance comes from, from what I aspire because... This is the difference, what we aspire to be and what we relate to. So, and and they are two very different things. So what I aspire to look like gives me the balance into how far I will go or where I want it to take me. And, and also then when I'm doing clients of mine who might want to have something which I don't like or, 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 or whatever, I won't do it because I don't think that that look is going to be good. So... So it's a it's a it's it's a very personal and 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 um, very complicated thing. But also, whenever I'm getting something done, um, the person I choose to either inject or to perform a surgery or whatever must have the same kind of outlook or that that I have. So I'm very particular who does a treatment on me. Once I've chosen my injectors, so for example, Nikki or Debbie are my injectors. So once I've chosen them, then I don't think, I don't ask, I don't want to know, just do it. You know, I can go in and I want to say, right, what, 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 what can we do? And they'll tell me, like oh, we can do I this. Feel like and I feel like doing something, you know? <laughs> okay, so, and we're going to do it because I trust them because I know that they are not going to make me look like a goldfish or whatever you know what I mean because they have the say if I had got if I would go to somebody else who is not result orientated who is money orientated I would come out looking I think that's a brilliant piece of advice to find the right person and connect Mm -hmm. with the right person Teresa (laughs) how do we find balance and what is your advice your advice to finish off this show because you are a real testament to somebody who's made a choice to improve and work on themselves with the assistance of a procedure. Yes, I always tell everyone, if something is bothering you and there is something you can do about it, just do it for yourself. Um, You're not harming anyone. Um, Just be happy. Life is too short. Um, (laughs) And if there's something you can do about it, like if I tell you you're beautiful and you are, 
but something is bothering you, I cannot go into your brains and change it. So do it, do it moderately and there's things I want to do and I will do them for me, Cheers. myself and I. <laughs> For me, myself, and I, yes. that at the very end was a beautiful bit of advice. So simple. I need to very much. I just That's drank it, it all. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, no, thank you. you very much. Let me top you up and we're good to go. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Thank you.